Hi everyone, welcome back to the show. This is your TC Fool right here. And today is another Taoist magic and Taoism talk show. So today we want to talk about some practical Taoist magic stuff, especially those of you who just entered the lineage or maybe you're in the lineage already. Uh, well, this lesson is very important. Review from time to time. Make sure you don't forget it. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's begin. Now, there are a lot of people out there promoting Talus magic and they will say, boom, this is whatever spell. Boom, this is whatever spell, right? You know, you don't just copy a spell and use it uh, individually. Okay. Like, for example, most people like that golden light spell, right? They like the word golden light. It feels like so powerful. So you believe that just by chanting the golden light spell alone is going to do something. It's not it's going to do anything. Um, you do a heart cleansing spell and you believe it's going to cleanse your heart. It's not it's going to do anything. You do a body purifying spell. It's supposed to purify the energy of my body. It's not going to do that. Why? Because all these spells are like, they're like parts, right? Spells are in parts. There are different kinds of spells. And you see, all the spells that people promote, they're like giving you the, it's like I'm giving you um, a gun, but I'm not giving you a bullet. I'm giving you different guns. I'm not giving you bullets. Or it's like I'm giving you programs, like maybe a, a zip file, a CD. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're old enough to understand, but it's like, yeah, yeah, you program on the CD. I have a lot of programs, but you don't have a computer. What's the program going to do, right? So basically, that's what it is like. That's what you don't understand, okay? In Talism, you always need three things in order for magic to work. Okay, you need three things. Um, so let's talk about spells first. First, the spell, you need a power source spell. Okay, you always need a power source. It's like your computer. You need to plug it to power in order for the computer to actually work, right? People promote, oh, my laptop is so powerful. My PC is so powerful. Yeah, but what if you don't have power? Hey, right? You don't have power, even if it's so powerful, you cannot operate that system. So first, you need the power spell. And that is what no one is telling you and no one is promoting or exposing from their lineage because it's, it is typically a confidential thing uh, that you have to keep in your heart and you cannot say it. Okay, like when you enter the lineage, they will say, this is a secret. You cannot tell anyone this. So that's why you don't see anyone promoting that outside. If you have learned from a traditional sect, then you should know that because it taught on day one. Okay, but it's also taught to you and also like you are told to keep it in your heart to yourself and you cannot tell anyone this. So that's why no one knows about it if you're not in a sect because it is a secret most of the time and they don't really promote using that stuff. Now, secondly, is um, the spell that actually do stuff. That's what people promote all the time. Okay, like for example, body cleansing spell, mouth cleansing spell, protection spell, right? That's like the spell that actually give instruction of what to do, okay? So that's what you see all over the place. People promote these kind of spells. Um, and if you just have these spells, it's pretty useless because you don't have the power. Um, and then the last one is the deployment of the spell. How to deploy the spell is the thing, okay? You don't just say the spell. A lot of people got these spells and they believe by just chanting it, it will work. It's not going to work. You need a way to output 
whatever spell power you got. Okay, even you have the power, even you have the spell, you still need to learn how to project the power outside. That's what you don't get too. <laughs> Sometimes people will promote that last part. For example, they will promote like a hand sign or some kind of like fool or something, right? Like how they exert the power. They will promote that too, but it's like not as common as promoting the spell alone. Um, so, you see, what you're missing most of the time is the power source spell. That's the most basic thing that people don't get, okay? So always, when you do magic, number one, you need to connect to the power. Every lineage has their own system and it's different. So you cannot compare between lineages, how they work, because the whole structure of their power source is not the same. In our lineage, I will explain it here because to us, it's like not really that much of a secret. Um, it's like we don't really have this rule about, oh, it's like confidential, you cannot say it, right? So yeah, I'm gonna expose it here. So for us, we have heart spells. These heart spells connect to different gods that you can draw power from. Sometimes it's like a god, sometimes it's uh, like a certain place in the pre-heaven dimension for accessing a bunch of other gods. So you got to understand the concept behind. It takes more time to learn, but in general, it's like you use the heart spell, different heart spell to connect to different levels of power, okay? For example, when you just get initiated, you have one heart spell, we call that heart spell zero. It connects to the God inside your body, which was given to you when you get initiated. This God inside you, you call that your Samlo Josi. You give it a name, Samlo Josi, okay? So you say the heart spell, you stomp the left foot, then you give that message to that God, that God will get your message. Like, oh, okay, you call me. And then you call me for what? <laughs> Right? What what do you want me to do? Uh, then you add the instruction. For example, oh, I need the God to help me, to protect me. I'm using the golden light spell, right? Then it's like, okay, so let's say I have the hand sign. I do my heart spell, stomp the left foot. And then I do the golden light spell, I stomp the left foot. Okay, now the God is like, I call the God up. The God got my message about what to do. Now what's next? Deploying the power, right? Okay, so after I stomp my left foot, after the golden light spell, okay, I have to open my eyes, point out, right, right, deploy, and then stomp my right foot to exert the power. Oh, right, and then blast the power out like that. I can also blast the power out in other ways. There's many other ways to do it. Uh, you learn more as you stay in the lineage and go to our lessons and so on and see me doing the magic, right? But in general, like, like that's a three step to deploy magic. Magic doesn't work just having like one spell. Like, oh, golden light spell, just recite that. My, my body is like glowing golden light. It doesn't work like that, okay? It doesn't work like that. You need to have the power. And okay, even if the golden light spell, right? If you draw power with, let's say, the same heart spell that we talked about, heart spell zero, that's the God inside you, right? If you're ordained, you have more heart spell, right? Ordained disciples, you have heart spell one and heart spell two. Heart spell two connects to the court, which is like, not in your body, like the power source is somewhere higher above, okay? It's in a higher above uh, place. And you connect to that higher power that is beyond your limit. So if you use heart spell two and then golden light spell and deploy it out the same way, it's gonna be more powerful than using heart spell uh, zero because this power is more powerful than the power that you have in your body. So you might be thinking, oh, well, if I have access to that powerful stuff up there, why do I need the lower power here? Okay, very simple, right? Let's say 
you have a knife for cutting stuff like stick knife, kitchen knife, right? Why do I need a chainsaw? <laughs> or I have a chainsaw. Why do I need butter knife? <laughs> right? It's not about who is more powerful. It's more about like you need those for different purposes. Okay? Um, let me give you an example. When we're doing talisman food, okay? You know the food, right? Like the yellow paper with the writings on it, right? No, those food. There are many ways to sanctify the food, which is like what we call chick food, to empower the food, to make it like go live, okay? So there are different ways to do that. Some food, because we have done so much on it, it will take like a long time to do the ceremony and all that to get the food checked, okay? So if you search on my older videos, you can you have you might have seen me doing one of those like chick food ceremony. It takes like over an hour. It could be like that, okay? Well, those are like the higher level stuff because you're getting like you want to access the higher power. You have to do more things to to get it activated, right? So if let's say I am in a rush, I just came home from work. I don't feel good. I need a food right away to deal with my problem. What's the fastest way? Is to use the, that heart spell zero, the lower power that is always inside your body. All I need is, okay, I can just grab anything, let's say a pen or a pencil or something like that, put it inside my palm, stomp the heart spell, tell the God, this is the brush I'm, this, this is the thing I'm using the right food. Okay? And then I just take paper, draw, and then clamp, heart spell. Okay, and then stomp the left foot three times. By the three times, give it a boop. Okay, the food is already usable. You don't even need a stamp. You don't even need the whole altar and all that work. You don't need all that stuff because the power is always inside you. This is really accessible and very, like, very fast. You just tell it what I need. This is the ticket. Boom, it's done. Imagine you're on a business trip and you know, you go into a hotel, right? You don't feel good. Are you going to have time to like, oh, let me put my incense pot here, burn some candles, burn the incense, and then do my chanting, ring the bell. Come on, like, the hotel's not going to let you do all that stuff, right? And beside, your friend is already having a Caesar or something. You don't have the time to like slowly set up your place and then do your chanting, right? That's just BS. It's not going to happen. So, what can you do, right? Quickly grab something, boom, and then draw the food and use it right away. And immediately magic power is there. You can kick in the power and solve the problem right away, right? So you see, lower power closer to you is not like it's weaker. It's just more convenient, right? So at least we did something to deal with the power. And I mean, deal with the problem, not the power. And then later, after we get like everything in control, then we can like move up a step. If like I see this person is better, but the problem is not all gone, then we can schedule a time, prepare, and then you know open the altar, do the real ceremony, and you know get serious about it because now that's episode two. Okay, at least you got everything under control, right? Not like, oh, he's still having a Caesar and you need to set up and all that and he needs to wait, right? That doesn't make sense? Okay. So back to the spell thing. You always need three parts, power, instruction, and how to deploy, right? So when you have learned, for example, um, like my disciples, you learn the cleansing and purifying spell, the Jing spell, right? You learn those spells. When you're using it, you never just chant those spells. You must have the heart spell first to decide, like, who, which power is going to be the one doing this job for you. If you don't use heart spell first, those are not going to work because it's like, you didn't plug your computer to the wall. 
you see, outsiders look at talus, doing talus magic. You really missed out a lot of like these little things and you don't understand because it, it's a secret. No one's going to tell you this, right? Here, I'm telling you the secret because I'm explaining the whole thing to you, trying to clarify to people out there, trying to research. And, like, you know, you might think that I just need to collect these spells and eventually I could use it. Well, beside the fact that it's not going to work for you because you don't belong to the lineage, one thing is, like, you will never get is the power. You don't get power. You have all the appliances, but you have no power, right? You might think, oh, but can I use my own power, like my own body's power? No, you cannot. Spells are secret, coded stuff. Like the spells are like code. They are programmed with stuffings inside the code. And these are all recorded in the lineage system. If you're not in the lineage, you cannot use those codes because just on the surface, those codes have no meaning. Like they don't do anything. Okay, so it doesn't work for you. <laughs> well, can you create your own code? Yes, you can. Okay, like if you're not in any religion and you try to like make up a spell yourself and stuff like that, yeah, you, you can actually do that like in theory, right? What you need to do is you need to, first of all, you make up a spell. It doesn't matter what the spell say, uh, but it needs to have a purpose. Let's say a protection spell. And your spell goes like this. La, la, lu, la, la. Okay? So, sounds very silly, but it's fine. Because whatever the spell say is like a password, right? The password can be like one, two, three, four, five. It's okay, too. So, whatever the word that is. And then you practice that spell and you put your faith into it, right? So every time you need protection, you will say the same spell. So eventually, it's like you believe that spell will work for that purpose um, without the need of any evidence or proof. Then over a period of time, because you always use it, that spell will accumulate uh, some of your heart power and eventually will become a real spell. After a while, you have been like cultivating it. As you can see, if you want to build the whole thing from scratch, it's going to take quite a long time. But it's not like you cannot, right? You can. It's just like very hard, <laughs> right? In a lineage, it's like people already have developed system. The whole system is developed, is polished, it's all built. You go inside. You learn how to use the system, then you can use it already. You see, that's the difference, right? It's like, can you build a computer from scratch? Like, actually not even buying parts? Well, yeah, in theory, you can. It's just very hard, right? But why do you want to reinvent the wheel, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so if you really want to learn Talus Magic, I would suggest don't try to, like, fiddle around yourself and then take parts from different lineage is not going to bring you to anywhere, okay? Now, I know, like, you guys might be kind of hesitating because you're still not sure. Well, it's okay. Now, our lineage offers free initiation. So, if you really want to try, you know, just try, right? You can go for the free initiation route and try to learn. We have posted some lessons on the website, which you can follow that list. We have like a, a 30 something lesson there, right? You can follow the list, follow the blog and such and learn from that. If you have problems, you can always email me. And what you get when you initiate is that at least number one, you get the power source. You're not gonna miss out that most important part, right? You're gonna get access to the lineage power. Well, to be honest, it's not going to be stronger than the one that you get when you ordain, right? But hey, it's free. At least you have the power source. And then secondly, then you can learn the, the, the spells, the full, you know, to use that power. So you will get like a complete full version of Talos Magic to try before you actually say, oh, I want to get ordained and get serious. 
Okay, this is what I'm offering to you guys. And so you don't need to bang around like a blind duck going around stealing or looting information here and there and trying to figure it out yourself. You don't need to. Okay, I strongly suggest if you have question, email me. I'm very open and I answer like almost like every email that comes to me with like a lot of depth. So lots of juice. So if you want to learn, you have question, feel free to come and ask and I'm here to guide you. So again, if you have friends or relatives or whatever, right, that like to learn as well, bring them over and try it out. This is the place where you can get access to a complete form of Talus Magic. So try it out. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.